What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the show and today we've got something fun. Livewire sent me their one here. Since you've heard me say a lot of stuff about electric bikes, to get somebody on the channel who has not ridden electric bikes on the street before so you can get a raw first impression of what it's like the first time you hop on an electric bike. So I dragged my buddy Ben out here. I found him just out on the street corner. He had an MT-09 and I was like, you, you, you're gonna get in this video here. Uh, and we're going to see what a dyed in the wool MT-09 SP simp has to say about the Livewire 1. So, you looking forward to testing out the uh, the, the live wire? Not technically a Harley, but they own 70%, so I'm gonna call it a Harley. Yeah, I'm, I can't wait to see how it rides on the street. Um, we have a great road planned, and I'm, I can't wait. So, now, you did tell me you've ridden one of these in a parking lot, right? Yes. Uh, as I'm sure everyone can can attest, riding in a parking lot is very different than riding on the street. We're gonna get you actually out on the street, and I'm really interested to hear what you have to say because this is your motorcycle. You may actually recognize this. This is the first motorcycle I rode as a full review when I went independent. So this is kind of coming full circle here. And uh, what do you think is going to be the biggest change for you going from the MT-09 to an electric motorcycle? I'm worried my left side won't have anything to do. I might look for an aftermarket fidget spinner or something. Uh, just because, like, every bike that I've ever ridden, my left side has always had to do clutch and gears and have to worry about engine revs. And on the electric bike, I won't have to do anything. Now, what, the way this is going to work is we're going to get him out on the road. We're going to do a raw first impressions, and then we're going to cut cameras and I'm gonna let him ride it around through these hills for a good while so he can get accustomed to it and then actually give you some thoughts on it. Then we're gonna swap him back to his MT-09 and see if he starts to miss anything from the live wire. So we're gonna get you the whole uh, life cycle of the first time somebody gets on an electric bike. But before we do that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Flying Eyes. Whether you're on a gas bike or an electric one, no ride is complete without a nice pair of sunglasses. And regular sunglasses cause pressure points under a helmet. Thankfully, Flying Eyes has a better solution. They've got thin stems that are designed to fit between your head and your helmet so that they don't cause any pressure. That and their frames are built to take a bunch of punishment. I even ran one over with a Harley and then proceeded to pick them back up and wear them for a couple of weeks until they told me they wanted that pair back for their trophy shelf. Check out all their frame and lens styles by clicking that link down in the description below and using the code SPITE for 10% off your order. Here are the keys. Good sir. Go ahead and uh, mount up and tell me what you feel when you first sit on it. Tell me if it feels like weirdly futuristic if you're in a whole other world or if it just feels like a normal motorcycle feels normal feels good feels sporty the seat length is just the right depth for me mm -hmm. so i don't have any extra room moving around put your foot up on the peg let me know how that feels it's sporty it's not relaxed at all it's sporty but it's not um it's not super sport. They're not clip-ons. You're not down here. Yeah. It's not uncomfortable. It's still comfortable-ish. You know, it's it's definitely telling you not to go cruise on the highway for a long time, but to go tear it up in the twisties, which we're about to go do. So turn it on, because I want you to feel this when it's not moving. So press and hold the start button. You feel that? feels like a bike tr with a, like a double-A battery trying to start. It doesn't feel like an engine. It feels like a heartbeat. Exactly. It has that, that kind of cadence. Yeah. It's definitely ba-boom. Ba-boom. Um, very kind of unique feature. And so you're starting off in road. You can bump it up to uh, sport or whatever. But uh, let's, let's go get your initial impressions on this bad boy. So I'm gonna have you lead out, and I'll follow you. All right, all right. Oh, 
forgot how good this bike is. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> this feels it. It just goes. There's no. There's no thinking. There's no fanfare. It just goes. That's something I appreciate about it. It's it's really easy to ride in that way. Yeah, and it's not like a scooter or anything. Like, there you go, perfect. Somebody, he just said, guys, it's not a scooter. <laughs> and it's doing the heartbeat thing. Yep. So every time it comes to a stop, it does the heartbeat. All right, I'm going. Ah, at like 50, I wanted to shift up. Just like I felt the engine revs go higher. And then I was like, okay, time to shift. Yeah, but right? The, you, you, <laughs> it definitely makes you want to, uh, to go through the gears. It, it accelerates in that sort of naked bikey way. I guess along the lines of it just going, it just turns. It, does it feel twitchy to you? Kind of describe that sort of initial turn-in. Yeah, the the turn-in is just smooth. There's no twitchiness for me that I found. It could be the weight, it could be the wheelbase, mm -hmm. but it, it I wouldn't call it darty. It it just goes. Whoa! All right. <laughs> oh <Why>? man. Okay. <laughs> There's no like, okay, I want to downshift. Am I in the right revs? It just goes. And it, yeah, oh man, okay. <laughs> and yeah, it's, the... it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's do this. Let's ride through these hills a little bit more. Let's get you some time to really acclimate to the bike and then let's come back for some more of your thoughts. Uh, Harley, classic right button, right turn signal. Yep, you gotta rewire your brain for that part. Why Livewire has not switched to the rocker switch, I won't, I do not know. Um, but uh, you do definitely have to ride it like a Harley a little bit with the, with using the buttons. But the rest of the riding sensation is very un-Harley. Oh, absolutely. The, this bike takes sort of body weight transfer really well just kind of shifting round left right it, mm -hmm. it, it just goes how the, does the suspension feel to you good um it's firm but not punishing mm -hmm. um i guess maybe similar to the brakes it's doing a really good job if the bike was 100 pounds lighter it would be Perfect. <laughs> kind yeah. of thing. There's definitely a lot of that. I would love to feel how it accelerates with less weight on it. I'd love to feel how it stops with less weight. How it transfers side to side. Getting into some of the, you know, more electric-y aspects versus the stuff all motorcycles have. How are you feeling with uh, regards to the turn and due to the longer wheelbase from the battery? Like, are the ergonomics feeling any weirder to you than they normally would? I wouldn't say so. Um, it, it turns in smoothly. I wouldn't say it's slow or like the, the suspension setup and the wheelbase are all working together well on the bike. Mm-hmm. So do you, do you feel like you've had to sort of recalibrate the way that you ride to yes. experience this in the twisties? Yes, but it's more just the lack of speed feedback. <laughs> like on, on the MT-09, I know how fast I'm going because of the gears, because of the revs. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm in the top of second. <laughs> I'm going fast. Or right. like, I'm in the bottom of fourth. I, what, like 50 in, maybe, I don't know. But with this bike, I got nothing. It's possible that I'm going faster, it's possible that I'm going slower. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't have a good point of reference. Right, there's definitely a, um, 
because you're in one long gear, you do have to get more used to it to really understand what speed means because there isn't that audio feedback. Right. Uh, with no with no gear shifting, with none of that, you're just you you just have linear speed. When you're leaving the apex, it is there's no spool up, there's no like get into the right rep range or anything. When you're like, okay, I want to go faster, I'm done with my turn. Mm -hmm. It goes. Yeah, there's no there's no setup required with the live wire. It just it just does the thing. Which is really cool. I really like how easy it is to ride it in a sporty way. That's one of the things that really resonates with me about these electric bikes is, and the Energica was the exact same way, the Ava Rebella RS. It was just so easy to focus on what you're doing as the rider versus where you need to put the bike, you know? Let's hang a left here. Let's do another loop. And then I want to have you get back on the MT-09 just to like get that raw shock of, okay, now I'm back on a gas bike. And yeah. I want to see where you find differences if there are differences to be found. I don't know if the GoPro caught it, but I actually went for the clutch at that stop sign. <laughs> now that you're back on the dino bones, let me know what what world of sensations you're experiencing now that you oh my god it's so different holy sh <laughs> <laughs> um so riding position this feels more relaxed yep. i didn't think this hair on fire bike would ever be called relaxed but versus the live wires more aggressive stance yeah oh okay yeah those brakes are a lot better. A yes, lot they better are. just under under the finger. Having hopped right back on this, uh, I've spent a lot of time on this motorcycle and obviously a lot of time on gas bikes. The biggest thing I'm noticing is how much easier the live wire is to just ride. Like when I'm yeah. vlogging, I don't have to think about where my gears are, I don't have to think about what I'm doing on the motorcycle. I can actually just like string together words really really easily there's less brain power going into controlling the motorcycle than there is on the mt09 yeah i guess that like i'm missing the nothing like <laughs> Interesting. it's not it's not that there is anything that the live wire does that this bike doesn't it's that this bike needs me to do more than the live wire interesting Well, let's pull these guys back over. Let's have a quick conversation off the bike. Give us some time to get our final thoughts in uh, in order. And then we're going to ask you the real question. Would you buy one? So let's pull over and wrap this guy up. All right. So pulling the bikes back over, give me your like last thoughts on it. You would, we'd been talking a little bit off uh, camera about how you said that this was basically like sleeping in a hotel bed. Yeah, right. There's, there's something different there and you don't know what it is. You have sheets, you have a bed, you have a pillow, it's dark, but there's something different. Right. And going back and forth between the bikes, it's, it's that same kind of feeling where there's home, but then there's not home. Right. But it's all still the same thing. All of your skills with perhaps the exception of engine braking are transferring from the gas bike to the electric one, but there's just a, it's a different experience. Yeah, uh, it, maybe the hotel analogy was better than I thought it was, where there's less to worry about. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make a hotel bed. Yeah, you just, you, you, you get, leave it just, and somebody else is gonna deal with it. Yeah, just lay down, sleep, get up, go. With this bike, just, I probably wouldn't sleep on it, but you can get up and go. There's just an ease of riding this bike that you, you don't have to worry about setting it up. You don't have to worry about Am I in the right gear to power out of this corner? It's just always in the right gear, which is one of my favorite things about it. But give me something you just didn't like, you couldn't gel with. Was there anything that stuck out to you in this riding experience that you were like, that needs to be different? On the bike, the only 
Only difference to me is the brakes. They're, they're doing a lot. I probably couldn't do a better job stopping a bike. With this bike, you think you go. With mm -hmm. the MT-09, you think you stop. Yeah. And with this bike, there's a lot. It feels like there's a whole 550 pound motorcycle between the, the brake lever and the asphalt, right. where that doesn't exist with the throttle. Yeah, it would be really nice if uh, the folks at Livewire would take another look at this master cylinder, because I think personally, if I were gonna find fault in this brake line, it's probably here. Maybe if we put some different pads on with a little bit more bite, it would help. But I do think that the main flaw is here at this Harley master cylinder. These Harley master cylinders, they work fine for non-performance oriented motorcycles, which is why when you look at something like the Sportster S or the Pan America, they do not have this master cylinder. They have a different one on there. And um, if you weren't riding this bike in a sporty manner, it'd be fine. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it definitely does the job. I mean, these are freaking Brembos on here, but I do think it's let down at the, at the bars. And you had mentioned how this was like three yeah. uh, bars stacked on top of each other. Yeah, three levers in a trench coat. <laughs> Um, it's a very thick, you can tell it's a Harley lever. Right, exactly. On a different bike, that would fit in perfectly. On this bike, eh. Um, and as far as Harley parts bin parts go with the, the thumb controls, they don't look the best, but they function fine. Here's where we get down to brass tacks. Mm -hmm. This motorcycle is $22,000. I believe it's $22,799. I'll have the exact price on screen here. Are you going to go spend that money on this motorcycle? Absolutely not. Um, I love it. It's a great bike. For 15000 it would be a wildly different conversation. It, in some ways, it's better than my, my bike. In some ways, it's not as good. And I understand there's a price to be paid for electricity. Yeah. Um, for $22,800, um, <laughs> you're not competing with the MT-09 anymore. Right. There are many other bikes in that price bracket that can do a lot of stuff. I think this was an, a result I was expecting, that you would enjoy riding it, you would have a lot of fun, but at the price tag, you're not gonna shell out your cash for it. Right, when I wasn't joking before when I said, do you wanna trade motorcycles? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it does feel premium, it's a great bike. Would you give up your MT-09 for this? Would this re could this replace your MT-09? I think it could. It's not the most comfortable bike in the world, but the battery isn't the biggest. The battery and the comfort are meshing well together. The same way the suspension and the geometry are meshing well together. Mm -hmm. um, that could be because I have a second bike, Yeah. Um, where if I want to take long rides, multi-day, whatever, then the, the electricity charging difficulties are negated. Right. Um, and you, you mostly use your MT-09 for goofing around on the weekends and, and light commuting. Right. Which, aside from super long rides, this is an excellent commuting machine. Absolutely. It's, I know we, were, we focused on the, the agility and the sporty aspects, but there's nothing the bike needs to do differently between riding calmly and riding aggressively. And that's yeah. really, really nice. Yeah, it's a very adaptable platform. It's a really cool platform. And I really appreciate you coming out and checking it out. I think it's a really great uh, just second opinion on this because people are so used to me saying this. Now it's a dyed in the wool gas bike rider who got on the live wire and had a really good time. And I think what, if anything, I'd like to impart on anybody here who may be a skeptic here at the end of the video, if you haven't ridden one of these, go take it for a demo ride, man. It's fine if you don't like it. If you don't want to buy it, totally cool. But go ride it, go experience it so that you understand what it does. And just, if you're gonna deny it, deny it from a place of knowing versus, ah, electric bike, not ready. And if you're going to ride one, be sure it's on the street. Yeah. The, the parking lot was a good introduction to, oh, electric bikes are a thing. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, as everyone who's taken the MSF course can attest, there, they're really different. Yeah. Um, just seeing, feeling this bike go from 20 to 40, feeling it go from 40 to 100, 40 to 100, right. <laughs> or, and throwing it into a corner and feeling that engine braking yeah. is, or sorry, engine regen. Yeah. 
is motor it, regen. Motor regen, oh. I guess. Because it's not, not, a, not an engine, it's a motor. What you have in your motorcycle is an engine. It should be an engine cycle. <laughs> and I think on that note, guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. A huge shout out to Livewire for sending me this motorcycle. Stay tuned. I know that some people out there are not gonna like it, but there is more Livewire content to come because this is a very important motorcycle to be talking about. And a huge shout out to Flying Eyes for supporting this video. I got mine on, Ben's got his on, so everybody's happy. Uh, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.